The so-called Ravonia trial saw Nelson Mandela sentenced to lifelong imprisonment, but he was already in prison at the time when the property known as Lily's Leaf was raided. This former farm has become a landmark in the history of the struggle, and I discovered some fascinating stories and secrets when I paid a visit recently. There was staged last weekend the first move in a campaign that may lead to civil disobedience. The story of Lily's Leaf actually has its origins in the late 1950s when the ANC began its defiance campaign against the pass laws, which required black South Africans to have permits to be in so-called white areas. Nelson Mandela famously burned his, and many others followed his example. This led to the ANC, PAC and SACP being banned, and the leaders of the struggle went underground. A property called Lily's Leaf in the Johannesburg suburb of Rivonia became the secret headquarters. The Rivonia trial marked a turning point in the life of Nelson Mandela, but the events that actually set things in motion happened here at the Lily's Leaf farm. Back in the day, the farm was a safe house and a place for ANC activists to meet. Today, we're going to find out more about the place and the role it played in the life of Madiba. Today, Lily's Leaf is a heritage site with the original farmhouse and some outbuildings restored alongside some inviting new additions. Where Zaki met the founder and CEO of the Lily's Leaf Trust, Nicholas Warby. Nicholas, it is an absolute Likewise. pleasure to meet Welcome you. Welcome to Lily's Leaf and thank you for coming through. The restaurant we're at is called Cedric's Cafe. What is the history of the name? It's actually the code name. So when there were messages coming from Natal, to Lily's Leaf, they would say there's a message from Natalie for Cedric. So Natalie was the code name for Natal, Cedric was the code name for Lily's Leaf. The farm was raided in 1963. What were the events leading up to this and who were the people involved? Lily's Leaf started out as the headquarters of the Communist Party. It evolved, or as Ahmed Kathadra described, through a process of osmosis it became the headquarters of the newly formed military wing of the ANC. This boy from the caravan park, whose parents owned the caravan park, was one day playing here with the Goldright children, and he noticed something highly unusual, and that was white men and black men shaking hands. And he went home and he told his parents, and his parents said, took him to the local police station, and the commander of the police station said, the next time you're at Lily's Leaf, write down every single number plate. But why is that story so significant? Because the shaking hands highlighted the essence of what the struggle was about. Lily's Leaf in, was the incubator of that new South Africa. Nelson Mandela was already in custody at this time. What was his involvement at Lily's Leaf? They offered Nelson Lily's Leaf as a place to go and hide and live. So he moved on in October of 61, taking the alias of David Motsamaya, the gardener in the blue overall, to look after the place until his white master moved on to the property. While he was living here, they were able to behave like a proper family. The kids recall playing with him, doing things with him. So there was a semblance of normal life. Thank you. I hope you don't mind, but I took the liberty of ordering the English breakfast for both of us. Well, it was an absolutely amazing choice. Your family was sent into exile. What was it like being in exile? And what was it like coming home? As an eight-year-old, I had made a decision that I was not British, I was South African, that one day I would like to return to my homeland. For me, coming back, was like coming home. What inspired you to establish the Lily's Leaf Trust? One of the things that Lily's Leaf is trying to do is to capture the memories of those people who have a story to be told because those stories are the tapestry of our past and the tapestry of our future and the tapestry of the present. Nick, I would love to take a look around, but first I'm gonna finish this delectable meal. By the time Nicholas returned to South Africa in 1991, the original property had been sold and subdivided, so he set about repurchasing and restoring. So this is the main house? This is the main house. The room we're coming into now, this was actually the dining room, and in here also met military logistics headed up by Wilton McQuay and military intelligence headed up by my father, Harold Wolpe. Can you imagine the stories that these walls could tell? Good evening. This is the news. South African human rights activist and president of the banned African National Congress, Chief Albert John Hobie Vitulli, 
has been awarded the 1960 Nobel Peace Prize for his role in the non-violent struggle against apartheid. So we're in the kitchen, and it was here that Nelson was standing on the day that he heard the announcement that Chief Latuli had been awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. And this exhibit tells that story. Nick, have they ever found Nelson Mandela's gun? We've never found his gun. It's not for want of trying. What happened was in 2003, he turned to me and said, have I found his gun? And I said, where is it buried? And he goes on to say that I buried the gun 50 paces from the kitchen door. 50 paces? What are we waiting for? Let's go count. So it was 50 paces from this kitchen door. One, two, three, four, five. I've got six, your legs. Seven. 30, 31, 2, 33, 34, 35. So it's somewhere in the parking lot that he buried the gun. I hear that Nelson Mandela's gun isn't the only thing that's hidden at Lily's Leaf. One of the things that was hidden here was Nelson's papers. In fact, while he was serving his five-year prison sentence, he asked Joe Slovo and Bob Heppel, who is his lawyers, to go back, collect his papers and have them destroyed. But a committee decided that his papers were too invaluable to be destroyed. They tasked Arthur Goldreich to hide them. And eventually, Arthur chose the coal shed behind us to hide the papers. And on the day of the raid, they noticed that when they lifted up the coal shed lid, they noticed that the coal was at an angle. So that raised suspicions, and they uncovered Nelson's papers, which allowed the apartheid authorities to bring Nelson as accused number one to the Rivonia trial, because it directly linked him to Lilliesleaf. Zach, unfortunately, I have to attend to a few things, but please explore the site. And once you finish, please join me for lunch. I'll see you at lunch. Perfect, thank you. During his time at Lily's Leaf, Nelson Mandela assumed the identity of a former client named David Motsumai. This would have confused the authorities because the real Mr. Motsumai was serving a jail sentence for embezzlement at the time. But there was also an ironic element to the name. It can be translated as to be on the move or on the run, which is precisely what Madiba was doing today. His his former room in the outbuilding has become a space where the new generation can express their appreciation. Thank you, Tata, for giving us freedom. With giant enlargements of newspapers of the time and other images, documents and artifacts, Lily's Leaf traces the path of the struggle after 1963. While one of the striking additions to the site is a wall of remembrance dedicated to the memory of fallen MK cadres. It is now time for Zaki to rendezvous back at Cedric's for lunch. This looks wonderful. <laughs> Nick, in your opinion, why is the physical preservation of heritage so important? It provides the basis of defining who we are as a people. If we have no history, how do we define who we are? This year marks the centenary of Nelson Mandela's birth. Do you have a message for the youth out there? We as South Africans must work together to bring about the dreams and the aspirations for those who some paid in the ultimate sacrifice of their life, others paid by going into prison and others paid by going into exile. We all as South Africans, as well as the youth, have a responsibility to reconnect with those fundamental principles. And that's what Nelson, I'm sure, would be hoping that we would do, that we would find again the courage to get back on the moral path to building a better South Africa for all. Nick, thank you so much for your time and generosity. It has been an amazing day. Zach, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here today. And as a token of our appreciation, I'd just like to hand over a small gift. It's a, it's a key ring which says on the one side, Lily's Leaf, and on the other, a place of liberation. Nick, this is wonderful. Thank you so much. An absolute pleasure. Thank you very much indeed for coming.